We just wrapped up the Consumer Electronics Show for 2018, and today I'm going to tell you the top five things I'm most excited about and why. Stay tuned. Okay, starting in no particular order, the Razer Mamba Hyperflux. So I've actually been using a wireless gaming mouse for a while now, the Logitech G903 with its power mat. It's a very expensive system and it works wonderful. Although I don't quite love Logitech's design, you may disagree. I like Razer's design here and the Mamba is one of their oldest mice going back years ago. So I'm glad to see it updated. So what makes this thing exciting? Well, it's completely wireless and it has no battery. This thing has 16,000 DPI in optical sensor, so don't worry about that laser issue. And you never have to recharge it. It has no battery in it, making it 91 grams. It is super light. It feels like it's hollow. And that's really good, they found out, for first-person shooters where people don't like to have a lot of drag when using the mouse. Now, I'm real excited about this because, like I said, I've been using a wireless game mouse. And once you go to that high precision and you never have to recharge it, it's just pretty awesome. So we'll see that later this year, and of course, we'll review it. Next up is a Dell XPS 15 2 in 1 95 75. Yes, that's a bit of a mouthful. This is their new 15 inch laptop. Now, I should make it clear here this is not replacing the current XPS 15. In fact, we can expect that device to get updated later this year. This is just a different version of the device, so you have two options. Ever since the XPS 15 came out, people have been asking for a 2 in 1 version, sort of like the Surface Book 2 15. You're still going to get an awesome 4K IPS IGZO display, which we know and love from the XPS line. You're also going to get a 45 watt processor that's quad core to new Intel 8th generation and has built in AMD graphics. That's a really good combo. For performance, we are expecting this to be very competitive with the Surface Book 2. Now, Surface Book 2 has a little bit better GPU there, but this has the better processor, so it'll be interesting to see how that pairs out. But overall, it's a really neat device. The only thing I'm worried about is that keyboard. It's a little bit different, it's going to have some shallow travel. We'll have to see if we get used Used to it. I think this is going to be a winner of a device. Plus, you have that awesome pen. That pen has 4,096 levels of pressure and supports Wacom and AES 2.0, and it should be a really good combination for those who like to ink on these devices. Look for our full review for that later this spring. All right, double dipping. We're going back to Razer here with Project Linda. Now, I should point out, Project Linda is not necessarily coming out. They did solicit a lot of feedback. If you don't know what this is, it is basically Razer's phone can be dropped into a Razer Blade Stealth and turn into a mini PC, although it's powered by Android. And using this thing for about 30 minutes, I have to say, this is already pretty polished. And I could personally use this as a mini laptop throughout the day. You can get exceptional battery life. You get really good performance. Don't forget, you can run the full Microsoft Suite suite of applications on here, including Outlook, Edge, you can do Word, you can do all sorts of Microsoft apps, give me a really pretty complete experience. Now, it's not going to be equal to a PC, but the performance was pretty solid. I was actually very impressed, and I think this stuff is going to be the future. Whether Razer actually releases this, we'll have to wait and see. Pricing is going to be the big determinant here, but I was very excited. This is the best execution of this concept I've ever seen, and I'm excited to see where it goes. Now, another cool announcement that sort of slid under the radar that I found really exciting was Dell Mobile Connect. So many of you probably haven't seen this yet, but it's a really cool application. Specifically, it's a Microsoft UWP app that'll be found in the store. Now, it'll be limited to just Dell PCs, unfortunately. So why is this really cool? Well, it allows you to connect up your Android or iOS phone to your PC. You're saying, big deal, we can already kind of do that. But this is the most full-featured version of this app I've ever seen. What it allows you to do is have incoming calls come in a little notification will pop up and you can answer it on your computer. Take the full call on your computer. Now, how this works is it's using Wi-Fi Direct and Bluetooth. So it connects through Bluetooth for pairing, but Wi-Fi Direct for the actual signal. What's neat about that, there's no cloud involved here. There's no local network involved here. So you don't need to be on Wi-Fi to use this. It's a direct connection to the PC. That means low latency and really good performance. So for that phone call, you have very good audio. Of course, that's not all you can do with this app. For instance, you have full SMS SMS abilities for conversations. It brings in all your SMS contacts and your messaging, and you can just message on your computer with your phone in your bag. You can also run all your Android apps on there, including games. And because of that Wi-Fi direct connection, it's going to be very good performance. Now, iOS will be a little bit more limited as they don't have full access to all the applications and functionality, but it should still be a very good experience. Now, this is only limited to the new Dell PCs launching after January 1st. That's a bit unfortunate, but I think it's a really big selling point for the XPS and Latitude line, and we should look forward to seeing it later this year. 
Finally, there's the HP Envy X2. Now, technically, this device was announced in early December, but that was the Windows 10 on ARM version. At CES, HP announced there's also going to be an Intel version. It's going to run their Core Y series processor for a little extra boost, and it'll even have an LTE option there. And I love having this ability to choose which version I actually want. I think it's great HP is doing this, plus it allows us to put them side by side to see how they actually perform. Now, for those curious, I'm expecting the Snapdragon 835 version to get around the performance of a Core M3 processor, which is pretty solid. I don't know how the new Intel version will run, but it should be a little bit better in performance, but probably less battery life. And that's going to be the big difference here. With the Windows 10 on ARM version, you're going to get instant on and very long battery life. I'm hearing people are going three, four weeks without recharging these things, which is a little bit mind-blowing, but I think it's really true that these are going to get very good battery life. But to wait and see, though, so look forward to that in the next coming months. So those are the top five things that I found super exciting about CES. But if I missed something, let me know in comments and tell me what you think. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody. What you think? If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> subscribe. Why can't I f say that? Subscribe. Sub subscribe. Subscribe. And don't forget to. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. subscribe.